For you. Trauma is not what happens to us, but what we hold inside in the absence of an empathetic witness, a quote by Peter Levine. Our relationships define the quality of our lives. It turns out whether something traumatizes us and whether we're able to heal that trauma comes back to our relationship. Well, we're going to speak about that. And we're also going to speak about the so method, what it is and how to use it in your relationship. Welcome to Gail Scott Key's Entertainment Now. I'm your host, Gail Scott Key, along with my co-host, Christina Millsaps. Christina, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing great. I'm so excited to dive into tonight's topic. And Robin is such an incredible guest, and she has so much knowledge that everyone just, maybe you should get out some notes, some <laughs> pen and some paper tonight, because she you might want to be taking true. notes for this topic. Absolutely. We are honored to have dear friend Robin Widener join us to help sort it all out. Robin is the founder and the owner of Robin Widener Copywriting and Consulting. She speaks on topics of health and wellness and as a talented author of many inspiring books such as Grace Calls, Have It on My Bookshelf and Secure in Heart as well, along with other books that she has penned, which has helped so many women in overcoming insecurity. She also is a certified trauma coach. So we're going to get to it right now. Robin, thank you so, so much for joining us. We are super excited to have you here with us and laying out the whole platform of how we peel back the layers of trauma in the hopes of going to a better perspective of understanding and healing. Thank you, Gail. And thank you, Christina. I am so excited to be here. I'm passionate about trauma, maybe for the same reason that other trauma practitioners are, and that is because I've suffered a huge amount of trauma throughout my life. And so this is personal for me. These yeah. are lifelines and tools that I need. Well, we're glad that you're bringing your toolbox of great healing so that we can open them up and skim through them. And like Christina said, I hope you have your pen and paper ready or you're hitting record because you don't want to miss this. This is great stuff. Robin has been traveling with her husband, David, all over and, and speaking to um, a wide majority of public uh, forums in the churches. And this is my question to you for those who aren't probably um, familiar with Robin, and you can help decipher this out. What's the difference between a trauma coach and a trauma therapist? Because I've made that mistake. So this is where the clarity lies. Well, actually, the the, uh, I'm a certified trauma professional, uh -huh. and that certification was formed because through a lot of study of trauma, they began to find that there weren't enough people that could help people with trauma. Mm -hmm. But the other thing was that they found that surprised them was that you don't have to go to a therapist to get help healing trauma, that what was needed was trained practitioners. And so they started this certification, Certified Trauma Professional. I think I was one of the first people that was trained in it. And so it's the same training. I was I was in training with, I'd say, all counselors. So And I take the same continuing education as counselors. But coaching provides a very unique modality that I've found super helpful to he healing trauma, a mm -hmm. modality of, of self-responsibility, um, Coaching can be done across states and across the world even. And coaching helps people get in touch with their values. And then I can take different modalities of trauma healing and integrate them to the person and to their journey. So each journey is highly individual and, and partially, maybe mainly driven by the person who's being coached. Yeah. That's a lot for when you think about it. And, and you said, especially with what the trauma that you've gone through personally, mm -hmm. was it hard to put things that you have dealt with in, in a, I want to, I don't want to say in a hold, but how do you decipher 
when you're giving so much of others to help hear their stories and help them to get through their trauma because you're helping remove their roadblocks in the trauma per se. Yeah, there's something called vicarious trauma and that is being traumatized by someone else's trauma. Mm -hmm. And so it's really been helpful for me to help other people with trauma because I've had to learn to center myself, to calm myself. I've had to, when I go into tra trauma training or a continuing education class, the first, the first time through, it is a hundred percent for me. Mm -hmm. And so as I learn these tools and I learn safety for myself, because, you know, the biggest thing they found about trauma is it can only be healed when you feel safe. It, it oh. can't be healed if you do not feel safe. And so learning how to find that safety for myself and then bring it to my clients, but then learning not to wear their trauma mm. and to interact as a witness to their trauma. Mm. You know, that's been at the beginning, I'll say it was a little tough. Yeah. It's something that has to be learned and experienced as you go along. <laughs> Yeah, this is, it's such a fascinating topic. And um, I think that was a good clarification between trauma coach and trauma therapist um, or a therapy, a therapy. And I'm just wondering, do you find that there are a lot of people out there um, as you're coaching people that maybe have some misconceptions? Like we were kind of talking a little bit before the interview that if something happened, like little tiny things that have happened, um, if you can talk a little bit about that, cause I know like, even when I said that you had said something earlier that I was saying trauma, you know, something happened to you. Um, but then you said something that was very eye opening about it. Yeah. Trauma is not what happens to you. It's what remains in your body after something happens to you. And so trauma can take many different forms. I've heard it called big, there could be big T trauma and little T trauma. Mm. You know, big T is maybe what we think of, oh, he got almost blown up by an IUD. You know, we think of something really, really big and we think mm -hmm. of that it has to be a big T to count. Mm -hmm. But actually the little T's, uh, you know, one of the types of trauma is chronic trauma, the drip, mm -hmm. drip, drip mm -hmm. of this event and that event and this person saying this and that sexual thing that happened and um, and and there's also complex trauma, which means that unrelated traumas can kind of attract each other and cause mm -hmm. triggers, you know, cause us to almost have flashbacks and go into PS, PSTD. So mm -hmm. every person is unique in their response to trauma. So it's not a this step fix everybody, you know, like a pill you take. Yes, <laughs> it's a yeah. process and it's a journey of going to those places of trauma with a trained professional and maybe with an empathetic witness and to make right what caused the trauma to go into your body in the first place. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So can you elaborate a little bit on that empathetic witness? Because um, um, that and kind of coupled with when you were talking about um, the trauma and healing it. So when you work with a coach like yourself to go in and heal the trauma, how does that, when you can kind of get in, you know, when it's whether, whether or not it's right after it happens or years later, how does it help when people are working with you to heal that trauma? How does that affect the triggers and then the PTSD later on? Wow. That is a big question, Christina. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think, first of all, I think you asked what is an empathetic Witness. Yes. I think of it this way. In my life, my parents, I'm a highly sensitive person. You know, it's called a HSP. And it turns out I am among the sensitive of sensitive people. I am hugely sensitive, which is an, a magnificent gift. But as a little girl, it was hard on my parents. They didn't understand me. And so comments were made. Instead of me getting an empathetic witness, the witness was, oh, do you always have to cry? Are you always, are you going to whine about that? Even poor Robin, why don't you go eat some worms? It's so rough for you. And mm -hmm. so I'd swing on the swing set and I was training my brain that people weren't reliable. You know, everybody 
nobody loves me. Everybody hates me. Think I'll eat some worms. Mm. And so an empathetic, if they had, then when I was sexually abused by, by a relative, I wasn't going to tell my parents because I'd already learned that there wouldn't be empathy. Does mm. that make sense? Yes. And so that trauma had no empathetic witness. In fact, it got buried so far in my soul. It took many years before I started doing a bunch of reading and healing work. And one night I had a flashback experience of my sexual trauma as mm -hmm. if I was watching it like a movie. And um, so I think that empathy bit, if someone is empathetic and work with you in your trauma, there's a lot less chance of it you know, getting stuck all inside of the body and the mind and the heart and the emotions and turning into PTSD. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, that, that was great because I, you know, I, I, you hear a lot of people say, um, oh, I'm so triggered or that was a trigger for me, or they talk about PTSD and it doesn't relate just to something that happened in the military, which is where I think a lot of people, you know, initially went to when yes, they, when yes. they would, when they would hear that term. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. and one of the other things that I know that you have been talking about is the so method. So what exactly is that? Uh, the so method is a way to communicate to other people who traumatize you mm -hmm. or who maybe even who borderline abuse you or, mm -hmm. you know, or don't treat you with dignity. And um, I asked permission from one of my clients to use this story, but I was coaching someone a couple of days ago. I've been coaching her for a long time, very both chronic trauma and very complex trauma from her childhood. And um, so that came out in a number of ways, but one of the places where it's settled is in her relationship with her mother. And so recently her father died and her mother really was triggered mm -hmm. uh, and kind of going off. And all the all the siblings have learned, oh, we appease mom when she goes off. You know, we, oh, oh, mom, mom, you know, we, we do whatever it needs to get past this. But what that's left with is just this immense sense of unsafety. Mm -hmm. And so um, we were talking and, and she, she said that at the the funeral she was she was ordering flowers and her mother overheard her they were at the funeral directors and her mother kind of huffed out i'm not going to spend one red penny on that man's funeral hmm. and to her this was triggering it was pulling up a lot of trauma and um, i was sitting with her as an empathetic witness and I've been with her a lot. And so I was experiencing it with her. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, she's, and I said, describe to me the dragon. So she described the dragon had fire, red fire. Of course, every red penny, I'm not going to spend a red penny, had mm -hmm. red fire coming out of its mouth. And that's how she was picturing her mom. And you can see why she's having trauma responses to her mother. But I had a different picture in my mind. And I'm like, have you ever watched The Wizard of Oz? Of course. Of and course. of course, who hasn't watched yeah. The Wizard of Oz? <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. But um, I said, okay, you remember the guy with the big, big voice? And, but it, he was behind a curtain. He was a little old man moving levers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, I picture your mom. She's not as the dragon, but she's inside of a dragon. Mm -hmm. And she's pulling levers. And because she has so much unhealed pain and trauma in her own life, she's got a magnifying system going so she can make herself very big. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, her question was, well, I see that. I mean, that, first of all, was like a breakthrough thought for her, that maybe her mother wasn't the dragon Maybe she could pull back the curtain and see something different than this big red dragon that's been she wasn't able to be present for her her whole life in some ways. Mm -hmm. And um, so we talked about the so method that you asked about. And it's just mm -hmm. a, it's so simple. 
but it's such a dramatic change in the way we communicate. And I suggested she try it with her mom. So in the so method, something happens that triggers you. And um, like this event with mm -hmm. her mother saying she wouldn't spend a red penny. So you ask the other person, you know, I'm having a reaction to that, you know, in my body. Could I explain it to you? So you ask permission because <clears throat> you don't want to keep going there with someone who's not listening. Mm -hmm. And then you describe the sensations in your body. So the S is for sensation and the so it's like, this is a way to mend. This is a way mm -hmm. to help someone, give them a little, a little hands up um, to help them perhaps be able to have an empathetic response. So first you describe the sensations in your body because trauma lives in the body. And then the E is for emotion. If that goes well, you can take the next step to emotion. Um, you know, if they say, wow, you, you that, all that's going on in your body. Okay, now they've <laughs> given you, now you take the next step into emotion. Yeah, I think I just feel so helpless. I feel powerless. I feel afraid. I feel empty. Mm -hmm. And... And so then after you share emotion, you watch for the third E, which is, do they give you any sign of empathy? You know, a mm -hmm. sign of empathy would be, oh, I'm sorry. Or, oh, I didn't, I didn't know you felt that way. Um, or, oh, you, you felt powerless. You see what I mean? They give you some sign of empathy. Now, this may take multiple runs through the mm -hmm. S and the E mm -hmm. before you get to the second E. You don't want them to be perfect, just some sign that they're trying, that they're listening. Then you can go to wants and needs, you know, like it would really help me if, you know, or I want to have a relationship with you where we can talk about these kind of things mm -hmm. and you to know how much I love you and that I'm not attacking you, that I'm trying to work out my own stuff. And so... Sometimes that's, but I've had clients where the first time they do that, it's remarkable that to them, the change that comes in the communication, um, maybe with a husband that he doesn't get defensive and start cussing and start, you know, acting out. Sometimes if we cut straight to wants and needs, I need you to do this and I need you to do that. And I want this and I want that. Mm -hmm. Then the other person just shuts you out and then you begin to feel like, this can't be healed. So That's I found right. this to be a very practical method to use with within families, with mates and friendships um, to help work on that building block of empathetic witness. And That's it sounds amazing because, oh, I'm sorry. I, I wanted to say um, with that, you, you hit, you touched on two points and I wanted to make sure that I covered this because the process it sounds easy and I know people yeah. are going to be blown away when they hear it, yeah. but it's the effort that also has to go hand in hand yes. because when you get excited about it, like, wow, she made it so easy, but they don't realize there's a key word that has been coming out throughout this whole dialogue, which is triggers. Right. And I wanted to make sure that we also address that because someone could be like, what is a trigger? They may not know what a trigger is how yeah. to know how to pause when you see the trigger, how yeah. to deflect and such. So when you have that type of dialogue, yeah. what is the process that you help others who are seeking to do the so method yeah. so that they understand this is a process, it's gonna yeah. take time because they might say, this is foreign, we don't talk like this. Yeah, That's and it may be topic. you're not ready to do that method yet i'm bringing it up because it's just kind of a foreshadow right of how much healing can be done yeah but maybe you need to work on first of all with somebody's help getting in touch with your body sensations because you've been mm -hmm. so cut off from your body for so long mm -hmm. you don't you, can't, you don't even ex you just you just blank out when you're triggered mm -hmm. yeah or, and so then that work has to be done first so i kind of took you into I mean, I've been working with uh, this this friend that I was just talking about for a couple of years. Um, sometimes there's pre-work depending on the trauma. Some people can go there rather quickly 
depends on your relationship. It depends on a lot of things. But so for me, the first thing I had to work on was getting those sensations back. Mm -hmm. And I remember, you know, I get really triggered when I was in bed with Dave at night because my husband had a sexual addiction that lasted 20 years. And, um, and that's part of my story of trauma Mm -hmm. and um, lay in bed. And I remember, okay, Robin, get your body back. And so I, I tap, you know, I tap, I tap, I, I wiggle my toes mm-hmm. and be like, okay, body, what do you feel? What, what's in here? What, what is, what's going on? Is my heart racing? Is, am I sweating? Am I feeling panicked? What's going on with my body? What am I feeling? And I learned until I got into the sensations of my body, I had no ideas, idea what I needed or mm-hmm. any ability to communicate it. Does that make sense? That makes yes. sense. That makes sense. That that's makes sense. wonderful clarification because that's exactly, Gail, where I was going to say it sounds like it's a practice yes. because you have to become self-aware, yeah. you know, as you develop into that method. And that's what I was going to ask is, you know, sometimes people don't even in the, in the beginning, probably stages of maybe the coaching or them even realizing what's happening with the trauma or the trigger that they don't even understand that that they're actually being triggered. And sometimes it is like paralysis or you just, you just completely numb out or you just, you suppress the feelings or some, you know, and then, so do you think with the so method that it's okay to come back and have a conversation after you realize like what just happened, or maybe you get the feelings back and now I'm raging. I'm so angry about this. And now, you know, yeah, absolutely. You could circle back and say, you know, that whole fight we just had, mm-hmm. I just realized that from my side, what was going on is I was just feeling really triggered. So it takes us back to yeah. trigger again. Yeah. And a trigger is when something in the present rusts you out of the present into a wound mm-hmm. or a trauma or a pain spot. And for instance, this Sunday at church, um, I got there highly sensitive notice everything mm. plus I'm kind of ADD and you know I had <laughs> I just have my things that I wrestle against and I I sing at church and when I got there the microphones were right on top of each other and mm. someone had said maybe we'd hear each other better if the microphones were really close together but it made me feel like in prison mm-hmm. it made me um so I brought it up to someone. They're like, well, we have to check with so-and-so. Eventually they let us move the mics, but something was going on there. Like uh, it, my response was so out of proportion to what was going on. That's a clue okay. that there's a trigger there. Okay. The response is magnified. And so I needed to, um, and after that, I got a pounding headache. So I ended up, Aww. you know, I ended up going home and just laying down and trying to figure it all out which is the first time I can say I've done that in a long time where I've had that powerful of a trigger. Mm-hmm. But um, a trigger is, is, is a friend though. Triggers are your friend. They aren't your enemy. Mm-hmm. A trigger is like a lighted path to something in your soul that wants to talk. Yes. Something mm-hmm. in your soul that wants attention, mm-hmm. a little girl in you or a little boy in you that never got to speak into something really horrible that happened to you or something that was said to you that undermined your view of yourself. Is this making sense? It makes yes, so that's a sense. great you know definition. Uh, it, it is a great definition. And as we're running up on time, because I want to make sure that we do spend some time over Robin's shoulder, there is beautiful art. <laughs> and I'm a big fan of hers, as she knows, because I have two of her beautiful paintings in my home. And Art, I wanted to make sure that we gave time to the art therapy side because in a lot of the um, the sessions that you have, you will do art therapy. And a lot has come out um, in these sessions that has been mind blowing. So I wanted to make sure that we save some time to talk about that and also circle back about your latest book, which is phenomenal. So I wanna make sure we get some time in for that. So if you could take you. us onto that path, that would be great. Yeah. First of all, in case there are any counselors listening or any art therapists listening, 
The only people who get, get to use that term art therapy are licensed art therapists. So everybody else, we have to use therapeutic art. Okay. You know, because that term is like almost copyrighted or something. Gotcha. So, um, Thank you. you know, I've done continuing education in therapeutic art. I'm super interested in it. And taking out a piece of paper and drawing something or painting a painting, I can get to places in my soul mm -hmm. and into the heart of my trauma. It's almost like I'm forming a painting that is an empathetic witness. And mm -hmm. so maybe I've pasted trauma work in there from my own trauma work. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's all kinds of layers in it. And um, I think you can see back there two hands. Yeah. One yeah. is an empathetic witness is open. And, and the empathetic witness has sent a butterfly to the other hand mm -hmm. that's still afraid, you know, and triggered and traumatized. And so my art is healing, intuitive art. And honestly, I can walk by and touch and put my hand on a painting and I feel I feel the empathetic wit witness there. You know what I mean? I feel I absolutely agree. Yeah. yeah. And I um, agree. Yeah. So it's something I'm exploring and interested in doing even a lot more research on. But people who are stuck, I often let them draw. You don't even have to be able to draw oh, anything to do this. Mm -hmm. uh, you can draw stick figures and it's just a way to let your soul talk. There you go, Christina. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I have never seen her draw. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I mean, that's really interesting because it's, 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 um, I don't know that people who aren't already doing something like drawing or trying to, you know, communicate or heal that way would even think about it. That's so well said what you said, what the way you phrased it. It's so well said. Um, and, and using that as one of the healing modalities and all of that. And, yeah. and it's just, it's, there's, there's many different ways through the process of healing, right? I mean, bottom line, trauma is healed when a new narrative is born. Mm. A new story is born. And that's where the fiction books I've written come in. Mm -hmm. My latest book, I took the story, I took a traumatic story from the Bible um, about Sarah and Abraham and explored the depths of the trauma in it and and using historic history, culture, uh, Judaism, and all kinds of different works from different faiths. I piece together a journey that isn't just her journey. It's every person's journey who suffered, you mm -hmm. know, every person's journey who's wondered who they are anymore mm -hmm. or who feels marginalized and unable to speak. And so I love how narrative, that's why the paintings I think are powerful because there's a narrative within them. They aren't just paintings, they're yeah. narratives. And so it starts with safety. Healing trauma starts with safety. You have mm -hmm. to feel safe. And there are ways that we can work through that in a session on how to get you safe. And breathing we do, tapping we do, you know, to get you safe. But then ultimately it's healed when, in, when the narrative changes. And, and I use something called the Emmanuel Method where I bring, you know, if someone's a believer, I bring Jesus in to the trauma to speak to the trauma as well mm -hmm. and um so i'm it's so cool there's so much re research out there right now and if you have trauma i want you to know there's hope yeah there's help yeah. and most of us who are helping is because we needed help yeah that's that is that is so yeah. comforting too when you're sitting on the other side as as the person being coached um and speaking of getting help get a few where minutes, can so people we want to make sure that we on there because we've got enough just a few minutes so just to let yes you know. <laughs> yes well my question was um where can people contact you how can they find you um speaking of help yes <laughs> you can find me on Facebook. Um, if you just type my name in on Google, Robin Widener, W-E-I-D, um, author, you'll find me. But you can also go to uh, Secure and Heart is my Instagram handle. Uh, you can go to Robin Widener on Facebook. Purity Restored is where you find my books, Purity, puritystored.com. 
Uh, it's a ministry that explores how do we get back to running free like little kids, you know, with joyously feeling free. And so you can go to purityrestored.com to, to see all my books and you can also get my email from there. But I'd love to hear from anyone who'd like more information. Absolutely. And Robin, it's always it's always an honor to have you in, in a gift because you just always bring such great insight. And we are appreciative. And I know that the time goes by so fast. It only means that you have to come back as you I would love to. So absolutely. Robin Widener, thank you so, so much. And thank you. We are also going to be posting up the links again that you can go to and visit Robin and also reaching out to her and the art therapy is going to be posted or the art that she has created is going to be posted up on her Instagram account and we'll make sure that you see that and uh yeah before I get to bidding on it I'd make sure if you like it talk to the author I know. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm just saying because I've got a lot of room back here folks I'm not scared I'm not scared Robin, it's been a pleasure. Thank yeah, you so much. All my paintings you. are available to to purchase and and we use it to reach other people with these messages. We love it. Thank you so much for your message and you are Thank such you. a blessing. Thank you for the time with us. Thank yes. You. Thank you, Robin. <laughs>